one of the realities of I.O. input and output is things can go wrong. When you try to open a file, it might not be there. When you are communicating over a network, something could happen to the network that prevents you from communicating with the other side. Whatever the reason is, it turns out that the ability to do I.O. and the functions do I.O. have the ability to throw lots of exceptions. And so this is a good time to kind of revisit the way in which Scala handles, uh, handles these. So we can demonstrate this, create an exception, by changing the name of our file to something that doesn't exist, and then this throws an exception. So iOS, uh, we get a file not found exception. And you might recall that the way in which you handle file not found exceptions is with the try catch finally expression. And it is an expression. It does wind up giving back a value. So when you have code that can do something wrong, you put it inside of a try block. And as the name implies, this tells Scala that it should try to do this. There's also a catch block after the try, and that catch block is effectively a partial function. It has a bunch of cases in it, and those ca cases can handle different types of exceptions. So in this case, we know that we have a file not found exception. E-X-C-E-P-T-I-O-N. And let's import that. And here we might inform the user that the file isn't there. The exceptions themselves have nice methods on them like print stack trace, which will actually print basically what this had output here. And we could have other cases as well. So file not found exception is one possibility, but it's also possible that something goes wrong with the read. And that would cause the more general IO exception. Something else went wrong with IO. And then we could <clears throat> print that stack trace. And let's reformat this. And now we should have our print statement that says the file isn't there. If I go to a file that is there, like this one, you know, it's possible we'll read the whole thing. What if I mess something up? So as long as it is greater than, I'm going to go with negative 10. Uh, now, now I'm sitting there reading the negative ones and causing problems because this doesn't actually throw an exception. It's really hard for to to uh, produce some of these exceptions when you want to. It could be things like I, uh, you know, the file somehow disappears or I don't have rights to read from the file in order to get some of some other types of exceptions. Um, yeah. It's, it's difficult for me to, to produce these here, but um, yeah, they could happen. So something could go wrong and we could get some other IO exception. Now I mentioned this is a try catch finally. Okay, what does this mean? Well, for this particular code, there's nothing that I need to do here. Uh, the finally clause is going to happen whether or not there is an exception at the end. And this is important for certain cleanup things because normally if an exception is thrown, what happens is that function that you're in, in this case it's our main function, so it just terminates the thread. But in, in more general terms, the function that you're in returns up to the function that called it unless there is something that handles this. If we did something like opening a file and we weren't handling that exception, I still don't want this to come all the way out. I also have the problem that this FIS here, if I get some other IO exception, it actually skipped over the FIS.close. This didn't happen here. You know, if something like if read threw an exception, 
well then this would have never happened. That would be problematic. Then I'd be sitting there with this file still open. Uh, now, you know, I, and I can't put inside of here, you might be tempted to do this, but that doesn't work because it's not in scope. FIS only exists from there to there. So how do we deal with both of these errors in a way where we can be guaranteed that we will always close our file if it has been opened? That is actually the purpose of having the finally block is the fact that we can always make sure that something happens. So we do our try here and the try is going to open the file. Okay, but then immediately we're going to do another try. And this try is going to basically enclose everything else. And I'm going to take these lines for my IO exception and I'm going to move them up into there. Okay, so the general IO exception is inside of here, it can't be a file not found exception because that was that occurred down there. But now I'm going to put this close inside of a finally block. And the reason for that is, let's think about this. So I open a file here. Maybe all of this reads just fine and it prints out. Well, in that case, the finally happens with no exception. The thing about the finally is it always happens, regardless of what, what goes on with exceptions. What if the read fails, though? The read fails, it comes in here, it does the, the catch for our I.O. exception, but then it will still go and close the file. So either way, we're guaranteed that this file that was opened right here is going to be closed. This catch down here is going to deal with the possibility it didn't open, and if it didn't open, well, we don't need to close it. Okay, so this would be kind of the proper way to handle this. Obviously, this is kind of unwieldy, and having to nest two try catches like that uh, becomes kind of a pain. So we're going to come back in the next video, and we're going to talk about something called the loan pattern, which provides a better way of structuring your code. It's, it's really just it's what's called a design pattern. And it's a way to set up your code so that you can do this, do, do things the right way without you having to write too much additional code to do it and without you writing too much of the additional try-catch logic.